Hello and welcome back to Roll for Damage. Today we're going to be making a sacrificial altar. The video was a little long so I had to cut it in two parts. This uh, particular altar is going to be for my goddess of the night or the lady of the dark. Um, so I am actually going to be placing an extra little tab on the back for my monument to sit and if you have made this monument feel free to uh, to go ahead and leave that tab as a uh, as I do but if you have not done this uh, feel free to just cut that off it's not going to be needed for any other part of this project all right so I got my little post-its there for my on the fly gridding um, I'm basically doing a three by six uh, floor I'm going to have uh, my monument behind there and my altar sitting in front of that so I still allowed for uh, an inch on both sides and two inches in the front all around the actual sacrificial altar. Uh, I had traced out where my monument was. Uh, she was four, I believe four and a half by a little over two and a half. Um, but uh, like I said, you, you don't need that if, if you haven't actually created her, her or uh, just change it to whatever size or whatever feature that you want to place in place of my goddess. All right, so there is my, my template, and I'm gonna use this for the very top piece of my floor. And I'm using EVA foam, my most favoritest crafting material, uh, only because it, it is so forgiving, it's so flexible and, and fun and easy to use. Uh, if you mess up, it's super easy to cover up the mistakes. The only thing that EVA foam does not like so well is, uh, is, is heat, which, uh, I use to my advantage. All right, so we are going to craft, or sorry, uh, trace out my uh, top floor template. I'm using a sharpie. If you do as well, make sure to cut on the inside of those lines. Uh, if you cut on the outside or like down the center of that line, that is not your true template. That's going to throw your grid off. So cut on the inside. Uh, I use shears because I know it gets a nice perfect straight line. If you would use a utility knife or an X-Acto knife, uh, you could actually have that blade at a 25 degree angle and it would throw this project off, or any project off as well. Not this one so much uh, because these pieces will not butt up to anything else. Um, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice uh, a slight kilter in the grade of cut. However, EVA is extremely easy to use, like I said, uh, and even if you cut a sloppy uh, cut, it's, it's easy to shape that as stone and use that to your advantage. Alright, so initially I had a different uh, design planned, and you see that little weird biscuit looking center, and I decided to do a different design. So I took that original template, and I basically traced it on the back and this is going to be my actual bottom floor that I'm cutting out uh, and it's it's really hard to see uh, from this angle with so many lines so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out for you uh, so you, this this will be the actual bottom level of my floor and, and what I did was I decided instead of a spiral staircase uh, case going up to this sacrificial altar I was gonna make more of a angular um, geometrical shaped uh, altar platform um, just for overall aesthetics uh, I, I didn't want wonky looking stairs with you know short on one side and fat on the other so I just wanted everything to be a little bit more symmetrical all right so once I get rid of all this excess uh, foam you'll be able to tell what I what I'm in there that's the bottom base that's gonna be the top base uh, the stairs will go up in increments to that top floor and then uh, From there, okay. So, what I'm doing now is I have a f straight line on my right side, and I measured one inch from that side to where the top of my floor measures. And then now I know that from the right side of that, I have one inch, so that's perfect. So, I'm gonna go and trace out my top floor so I can create the floor underneath it. I'm gonna go back on all my sides and go out one inch. Uh, you could go out one inch and say like an eighth 
so you have a little bit of overlap for uh, to make sure your minis are perfectly um, and have a little little cushion that surrounds them um, however I just keep mine at a straight one inch um, this was me uh, trying to figure out how to keep my line straight uh, and failing miserable so uh, I figured this out a little bit later down the lines um, so it just just ignore that one little part I, I, I meant to edit that out and forgot all right so I'm actually going out uh, all three inches because my floor is going to go down I have the bottom piece that'll be my fourth inch my top piece obviously we we're not measuring so I need two more pieces to go from one inch to four inch grid if, if you follow what I'm trying to say so I measured out one inch and then straight down I'm gonna go out another two inches so total from my top floor I have one grid two grid three grid three inches all right so we're gonna cut this piece out as well and then uh, after we cut this piece out we're going to proceed to the floor beneath that one which again we're only going one inch increments all right see we have a one inch pretty easy right I'm gonna use my ruler to get a better um, uh, straight line for my uh, that angle cut layer I flipped it so I had a straight cut on that uh, on that side so I could measure my one inch out bring my uh, my platform back butt it up with that one inch line and then we're going to trace my format or my template sorry and then again repeating the same processes we're going to expand it one inches in all directions. This was the simplest method that I could uh, follow to make sure all my platforms were exactly uh, one inch away. And then uh, I'm gonna go back a little bit later and cut out my actual blood pool. Uh, but for the, for the sake of keeping things uh, simple, I decided just to uh, go ahead and do the one inch grids and keep everything symmetrical and then just go back and cut out what I didn't need. y'all haven't worked with this material I really suggest uh, giving it a shot it's so easy so much fun to work with all right there we go now my issue was I had to get uh, a straight line from that top corner all the way to the bottom um, so all I did was use that straight line that I had just cut and just draw a line and that was that was pretty easy repeat on the other side back and make the cuts. You already have that line where it butts up to that top altar and you want to follow that line all the way down because you want that to be a straight fall. You don't want that to uh, take in increments down. So we're going to have a flat wall that just spills into this blood pool basin at the bottom. All right so there is the first base floor. There's a second one being placed on top. Um, I had to go back and trim, which again, this stuff is extremely forgiving, so things like that are easily uh, doable. Alright, so now I have to go back one more step. So that third step, 
I went back and uh, traced out. See, there we go. Uh, because previously that floor was covering that mark. So that's why I had to go back and do it one more time. There we go. Now we got us a nice deep wide pool. All right, pretty cool, huh? Originally I was going to put the altar there on the edge. Uh, that way it just dropped in, but I decided to move all the way back. Uh, and you'll see that a little bit later on. So this looks really good. Um, we are going to uh, make sure everything is lined up. Uh, I, I used a ruler to make sure my edges, everything was one inch as it should be. Uh, as, as long as I was within an eighth of an inch, I didn't mind one way or the other. Um, again, this could be uh, easily, easily uh, finagled and moved as needed or trimmed on the fly. So, um, I was satisfied with where it was and I'm going to go back in hot glue one layer at a time. Start off with your outer edge. Um, do not put a lot of glue, it doesn't need it. Again, this hot glue uh, melts into each other and it creates a really good bond. Uh, that being said, it also could be pulled apart without destroying everything around it uh, if needed. And I'll show you that also in a little while. putting it on layer at a time pushing down firmly uh, this this is you know uh, kind of like a yoga mat it's the same material as a yoga mat so don't feel bad about pushing hard on it it's not gonna uh, it's not gonna leave a mark like uh, insulation foam or something of that type would all right there's me measuring it up making sure it's good Let's lay, lay my grid back down, and this is uh, when I decided I'm going to move it in the back. Uh, just because it was right before her, it made more sense, and that gives me a really good um, aesthetically uh, pleasing uh, blood trail that I, I could form around that altar, have it fall down, and then into that pool. Now what you see me doing here is those little tips that I cut off to actually give those uh, that angle I had kept and uh, there's going to be my blood pool and I'm going to have a little channel hollowed out in the stone that follows that channel down into the pool. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take those little two ends that I cut off and they were actually nearly the exact height that I needed for those three layers. Uh, so I'm going to go and take and just hot glue them in, in a path. That way it actually looks like chiseled or, you know, carved stone that came from the altar and just gently glides that blood into that pool instead of, uh, you know, just spilling over the side and with no purpose. So there we go. Now, uh, it's three layers, uh, so it's going to be really easy for us to make that brick texture. Um, so let's just go ahead and follow that grid, uh, our grid up, you know, from the top to the bottom, and we're going to alternate. Uh, that way each line is in the center of the brick above it or the brick below it. Um, and you, you guys, y'all do this, you know what I'm talking about, just uh, you want to stagger your bricks. All right. So we have to create an outer wall for our blood pool. Um, and I'm just taking EVO foam and just kind of eyeballing it. Uh, I cut off just a little bit more so I didn't have to force things into place, uh, which you can, you can still force it, but it, it's much easier if it just fits more naturally. So I place it in there. I use my pin where the actual uh, foam met that, that second layer, not the bottom, but the second layer. Um, and then I use that pen, pen to, uh, to mark where, where they meet. So I'm applying the glue and I'm going up to that second layer because uh, that, that brick wall goes up to the second floor. Alright, there we 
here we go. Our actual structure is complete. From this point forward, we're going to paint, we're putting in lights, and it should be uh, really good to go in the second episode. And I lied to you. Sorry about that. So, this is outside in my garage. Do not do this inside in a non-ventilated area. I'm creating a small little semicircle. I created the channels for uh, my blood pool. And it's a pretty deep channel because we're going to go back and fill that with hot glue. And then I'm just showing you just drag that, that soldering iron and it creates that texture. I forgot to show that. Um, but needless to say, uh, you, you don't want to hold it on there long. It, it, uh, it melts super quick with something that extremely hot. Okay, so I'm going back and I am spraying my black acrylic paint in my squirt bottle. Make sure I have good coverage. And um, uh, this is a 50-50 mix. So we are going to pick this up in the very next video. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned to episode 2.